my name is Mia. I'm from Quadex, as uh, Richard has mentioned. I handle the commercial side of the business and operations for international services and payments. So I guess um, that should explain the title of my presentation today. I'm X-rated. Logistics Rediscoverers Sexy. Right. Um, when we think about logistics, sex is the farthest thing from our minds. We think we, we, we think delivery, moving things or goods from point A to point B. But at the back of everything of commerce really is a very intricate logistics solution. But what you don't see, what you don't feel, what um, you don't smell, you don't get to touch, doesn't excite you. And excitement is highly sensorial. Right. So, for example, um, let's say let's say a watch. You don't drool over a watch because the gears inside fascinates you. You like a watch because the the dial is pretty. You like it because the leather smells good, or it sits very well on your wrist. Now, everything, all of that, the interaction um, with a product. Now, you don't really see that with logistics, but with e-commerce now, everything, the human element in logistics is actually, uh, sorry, in digital commerce, is actually brought forth. So the human element um, in, uh, is what, puts, um, what makes uh, e-commerce now very, very sexy. When I say this, it is an important element that connects the digital commerce transactions into customer experiences, into delightful experiences. Um, it excites you of what is to come. It actually uh, turns you on it, it, uh, of, of uh, basically what you will see and what you will feel. So that excitement, that joy when you receive finally the item that you have been waiting for, that is actually what logistics brings you. For the first time now, logistics is at the forefront of commerce. Ito ngayon, yung nakikipag-interact sa'yo. In fact, it is the maker or breaker of your customer experience. If you're expecting your item to be delivered to you today, right, and if I don't deliver that, it frustrates you. In fact, it can be so bad such that it can actually piss you off. And that's when you see. Kaya may kita mo um, in, in most, uh, uh, what do you call this, marketplaces. There's a lot of the complaints are actually coming from the delivery of the product, coming from your interaction with your career, coming from whether or not it was actually packaged very, very well. And all that gives rise to a demanding. So all of these things, the consumer, the e-commerce, the, the, the delivery provider, comes into the rise of a demanding consumer. So lahat yan right now, because everything is um, supposed to be expected really fast. Your customers now becomes more demanding. It has given rise as well to a new breed of business people. Quad X actually attracts um, both of these: the your your demanding customer and your new breed, your new kind of business people, by providing unparalleled convenience, convenience, um, unrivaled business opportunities, and um, a suite of products and services. That redefines how e-commerce is practiced and experienced in the Philippines. Take for example these two products that we have. Earlier I think it was Javi who mentioned that there's a lot of pain points in e-commerce. Check Me Out and Shipping Cart were actually designed to fix those pain points, those friction points. Check Me Out is a multi-platform, multi-payment platform and a pickup and delivery solution for social um, merchants, for social entrepreneurs, the people that are actually selling their goods, their products online via Facebook or Instagram. Um, if you're a startup, if you're a small merchant, you're just starting, basically no credit card company will actually um, accredit you. So your options for payment are highly limited. With Check Me Out, you can already, you have a wide payment option. You have, you can accept um, cash and delivery. You can already um, accept credit card and debit card payments and even online banking. All with just um, a click of a link. Right? Hassle-free and nationwide collection. Sorry, that's supposed to be nationwide delivery. With Check Me Out, you're no longer limited by the city that you're involved in. Check Me Out and, and Quad X actually can deliver nationwide and even outside of that. What it does for a merchant is allowing you 
actually to be at the same level as the big boys, even if you're just starting up. Instant selling is one more thing. With uh, Check Me Out, all you need is a phone number and email, and you can already sell. And when I say sell, you can accept all types of payment, and you can already deliver your goods and services nationwide, and even outside the country. Online meetups is another thing that we're building. When, um, I don't know if how many of you have actually transacted or bought things online, but usually when you buy online, what you will say is, hey sis, magkita tayo, or can I see the products first? Because trust is a very, very important thing. They wanted to see the item first and make sure it is as advertised. So now let's check me out. What we're developing is actually an online meetup so that you don't have to go out and meet in Starbucks with your sellers and magkaliwaan kayo. Right now, you can already do that online video through Check Me Out and you can close that sale right away. Shipping cart. Shipping cart is another service that we have that addresses a particular friction point. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of our, sorry, our choices locally are somewhat limited. And there is a niche market that actually uh, buys outside the country. Whether you're a small business and you want to import them here, or you're an individual who would like to shop outside. But when you do, for example, when you buy from Amazon, um, Amazon is a marketplace, so when you buy from them, the items get delivered to you individually. Shipping cart is a consolidation service. So what it does is repack and consolidate it for you so that your shipping from abroad to the Philippines is, in, is just one. All right. um, when your item, let's say, arrives in the US warehouse coming from Amazon, it would arrive in a box this big and the item is this small. All right. And when you ship it, naturally, you have to pay for the volumetric of a box this big. So one of the services that we provide is repacking. So we'll fit the size so that we allow the customers to actually pay what only they have, uh, parang, kumbaga, uh, we maximize, we make it more efficient for the customer. Photo documentation is another thing that we're doing. Um, and in fact, that's not the more important thing behind photo documentation is so that you will know as a buyer whether or not the item that was delivered is actually what you bought. This is actually akin to the to the online meetups of Check Me Out. In here, once you see this item, we will also assist the customer to handle the return to merchant in case it is not the item that they've bought. All right? Simple pricing, transparent, naturally all of that are, th are there. Trying new things with technology. Our company is premised on experience innovation. It is in our very DNA. We continuously try to improve and innovate on the things that we do. Um, as you can see in this diagram, the customer is at the forefront. It's front, right, and center of everything we do. Um, I don't know earlier if you saw the, the ones that they were showing on the video outside where Steve Jobs says that customer experience is the first thing that you develop and your technology works backwards to, develop, to, to give you that experience. That's exactly what Quadex is doing. This whole background, this whole diagram shows you that from product innovation, from creating that product to the time the, and, and giving that product to you. All of that are driven by data, by consumer data, by the habits that you make, and making sure it is engineered to what the consumer will want or will need. In fact, more than what they, they need, it is actually sometimes even creating that need before they even know it. Hey, the sexy future of logistics. So what else is there? Um, the advances in predictive modeling and machine learning has already optimized e-commerce as we know it today. But all that basically heavily hinged, you know, we see a future that is heavily hinged on data and technology. That said, we see a future that is autonomous and self-orchestrated. Um, Sorry, there. Okay. The future will be leaner and more autonomous. Mean to say, well, everything will now be based on technology, and the interaction that you have is based on the learnings that are provided by artificial by AI. I don't know. I think um, Microsoft uh, will be talking about that technology later on. Um, autonomous fleet. Now, coming from these, uh, I'm not going to say, there's uh, five radical technologies that Sullivan and Frost has mentioned that will drive this future. One of them is autonomous fleet. 
Drones naturally is the poster boy for autonomous fleet. Um, especially gaining a lot of attention after Amazon has said that they are already planning on launching drones for last mile delivery or last mile fulfillment. But before, before drones, the first vehicles that has um, become autonomous in the supply chain are forklifts. When you go to a warehouse, man travel, people that are actually going from one rack to the next is the most unproductive time-consuming activity in the warehouse. But with um, uh, what with forklifts now being autonomous, this is called vision-guided uh, mobile robots, and we're actually testing it in our U.S. warehouse. With this, it answers that, that productivity problem. It answers that you don't have to have so many people running around the warehouse anymore just to get items and pick and pack. All right? In fact, with this mobile robot that goes around can actually process packages for you and at a lot faster rate. I think about four times the rate of a human actually doing the processing for your packages. Data. Data. I'm not sure if someone's going to talk about big data, but um, by pretty much sure that uh, Microsoft and Bitcoin will probably touch on that later on with Anna. But I am personally a strong believer of using small data in a very, very big way. Um, I believe and I embrace big data. But for me, it's more important to use the value that it brings you. Um, the important um, thing about data. For example, 90%, 90% of the data that we actually get now are actually are spam. It's trash data. In fact, Amazon is already developing something that calls out the trash data and only using the 10% that's remaining to profile your shopping behavior. And in their latest patent called anticipatory um, delivery or anticipatory shipping, they can already ship packages uh, to, the, to the address closest to the consumer. It is called half address. And while it's in transit, they are already, that's the only time they will complete that address so that when an order comes in, it's, it's practically delivered to you. It's zero fulfillment time. It's wild. Um, so right now, says in a matter of seconds, it's completed. How does it? How does it happen? Basically, it reads your 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 viewing behavior. Let's say iPhone 10, for example. Let's take that for example. iPhone 10 is coming out. A lot of people will do searches for iPhone 10 features. A lot of people will search for pricing and all of these things. Now, Amazon would read all of those information, get your IP, and try to deliver iPhone 10 closest to you. By the time an order comes in, it's practically, it's practically at your doorstep. A new breed of technology players. Um, becoming less asset-centric. I don't think logistics will ever be um, non-asset. No? It will always be asset-dependent. However, it is interesting to note a new breed of logistics players who don't own any asset. They don't have warehouses, they don't have fleet. But rather, what they have is aggregating information, aggregating data about logistics players that actually own those assets. An example of that would be Gram, Zipments. Okay? So they basically just funnel and get all of those information so that they can push the transaction back to them. E-brokerage platform, the rapid digitization of supply chain will actually force uh, traditional brokerage, uh, freight brokers to align their business model towards more mobile-based solutions. An example of this would be like Uberizing your trucking. So now all of these things are already available to a freight broker and everything can now be funneled towards your um, carriers faster. So you're no longer limited by a few selection, but rather it opens up options for you. The blockchain. Now supply chain is really just a seamless flow of goods across a multitude of channels and being able to track them. And that is exactly what blockchain is all about. Later on, Anna will talk about blockchain. But what it does for you is to make supply chain compliant, 
transparent, and have innovative solutions or processing that is expected to create more transparency and a new um, and new, new services. An example of that would be the e-broker rich that was presented earlier. Because all of these things, technologies, doesn't really um, operate or come out or, or succeed in silos. Technology can only be good for us if they interact well together alongside our processes. So one technology most likely will not work out. Right? So it's, it's always an interaction of different technologies. So that's why all of these solutions that I've presented, if you've noticed, are actually working together. E-brokerage with your blockchain, your data with your creating your, your autonomous fleet, and so on. Um, the scenarios I have presented aren't really just uh, fantasies that Put with it, uh, that we whipped up together so that it can turn you on. Rather, it's uh, a snapshot of a tomorrow that is coming sooner than we expected. Better yet, it's actually a picture of, of a future that you can be a part of. And that actually is what is truly sexy. Thank you for having me.